Hey folks, my name is Dima, and I'm a senior front-end developer based in Berlin. I've got more than eight years of experience across different companies. On this channel, we talk about passing front-end interviews and advanced front-end topics in general. If you're preparing for an interview or working on your career as a web developer, you will find some really good stuff here. Today, I want to discuss front-end architecture patterns and how we can apply them in modern front-end applications written in React or Vue or other web frameworks. The problem with architecture patterns is that you can read many books and articles, but without practice you won't be able to apply them in a real web development. This creates a gap between knowledge and skills. Unfortunately, knowledge without skills will not help you pass front-end interviews or get a promotion at your current job. My goal for today is to close this gap or at least make it smaller. So let's start with an MVC and MVP, Model V Controller or Presenter. If you forget, here's a quick reminder. Model is data plus business logic. View is just a UI. And Controller or Presenter is like a bridge between Model and View. I found these patterns very similar, so I decided to combine them into one section. It's not like only one definition of MVC or MVP. If you open Google and type MVC examples, you will find hundreds of different examples and explanations why other interpretations of these patterns are wrong and this one is correct. So this is my interpretation. I'm not saying it's the only one possible interpretation and later I will explain why it's important to have your own interpretation of these patterns instead of copying them and applying them blindly. Let's look how this works in React. The React team initially said that React is view only. It means React is responsible for only showing something on the page. It's not responsible for logic. It shouldn't contain any business rules or data management. React component gets some props and decide how to render them. Here's the example of the employee component. This component gets some data and renders this data on the page. Where do these props come from? When I was working on this video, I noticed that the current architecture explanation might still be too abstract. So if you want even more details and real examples, please let me know in the comments. And now let's go back to the video. Props is basically data from a database, a list of employees or clients. In an ideal world, we get this list and render it as is. The client side part, React components, are the view in our concept. Backend in this case is the model, data plus business logic. When on the client side, I click delete employee, I'm not doing this on the client. I don't have access to data on the client. If you think about it deeply, I'm not able to delete a user from the client. I'm not deciding if I delete a user from the client. The only thing I can do is trigger an endpoint on the backend side. I don't even know what's happening on the backend. The user might be deleted, might be archived, might be moved to a different category. Many things could happen. But on the front end, I see this button and I can click it and other things happens on the backend. This is an example of strict boundaries between client and server. I'm not deciding on the client side what this user is, should it be deleted, archived or moved. I'm just clicking the delete button and calling the delete endpoint. That's all. Other business rules, what should happen with this user, that's all happening within the model. So we have view depending on model for data, but how do we pass data to the model? We can technically do it. We can send request from view to model directly. We can use fetch or WebSocket connection right inside the view. But why usually don't we want to do this? The reason is simple. What if we decided to replace React with the view? What if we decided to replace Angular with the React or view? In reality, it's rare, but happening. Even if you migrate from one major version of React to another version, it's better if you have less code in a view, if it's only a view code. You don't have to think about fetching and managing data when migrating the UI, because all this logic remains the same. We have tests, we have endpoints to ensure we don't change any logic. So we don't want to put this logic and other logic inside the view. 
it means we need another place for it. At this point, we need a presenter. The key distinction between MVC and MVP is in this C part. So the controller is not responsible for updating the view, whereas the presenter is responsible for it. I personally think that the view should be isolated from the business logic, so I will use MVP as an example. As you remember, the presenter is needed to get data from the view and pass it to the model, and also do the opposite, so getting data from the model and passing it to the view. Presenter, if we apply it to a classic React or Vue application, will be here on the client side because we need a place for making requests to the server. But we also need something like a controller on the backend side as well. And that was the API endpoints. So technically, we have two presenters, controllers, because we have API layer on the client side and API layer on the backend side. And don't forget that we need a place not just for getting data, but also for preparing these data to the next layer. That said, we use a controller or presenter to prepare data to the view, because sometimes we don't want to show the raw data received from the backend. And the same is true for the backend. We might want to prepare data we received from the client. For example, we might want to validate it. In the React or Vue terms, presenters or controllers are usually represented by functions or hooks in React or composables in Vue. Things like use users, use clients, use employees. Or if you prefer a more granular approach, use get user, use update user, use delete user. You can create one big hook or a composable called use users, which does many things. It's up to you. This use employees layer encapsulates API calls and related logic. That's our controller or presenter. Today, things become more complex because we also have client-side logic or UI logic. For example, I want to show pop-up and I want to close it. When I close it, I need to change something in my UI. I need to change the color when it's open or change the background, for example. All of these things are not like real business data, but we still need a place where we store this data. For this purpose, we have a view model. As you remember, view models should implement two-way bindings, which works in Vue, but not in React. Technically, we cannot call it MVVM in React, but I believe the concept still helps. For example, when a user fills a form on the client side and accidentally closes the browser, I want to save these data in local storage so when they reopen the browser, I can show them this data again. I cannot save this data in the model, in the database, because until the user clicks the submit button, it's not a real data. I prefer to move this to the view model category because it perfectly describes it. It's a model, but only for the data we see on the page. At this point, I want to highlight that the purpose of my previous video about front-end patterns wasn't telling you to use these patterns strictly. It's important to know about these patterns and how to use them properly, but we don't need to strictly follow them all the time. I saw projects where developers tried to do it and it didn't help. Problem with all these guidance in the internet for these patterns is that authors of these guidelines try to make something simple like a to-do list and try to show difficult concepts based on this. Every project is unique and you cannot apply generic things to unique projects. Think about it like a diet or a gym program. You can get a perfect program from a famous bodybuilder but it won't work great for you because you as a human have unique traits that couldn't be considered in this program. Maybe you don't have access to some equipment. Maybe this replacement of exercises aren't good for you because your arms are too long or too short. It doesn't mean the program is bad. It just requires tweaks to be your ideal program. Same is true for patterns. We have a concept of boundaries and we know approximately where we need to put these boundaries. We know data shouldn't be mixed with view and business logic shouldn't be mixed with data and view. It gives us insights when designing our apps. Today, we have local first applications, PWA and many other concepts and different web technologies. All these patterns weren't created considering these technologies because they didn't exist back then. Our frontends today are much more complex than when these patterns were created. If you think about complex view or React application, it's all the time mix of these patterns. 
So back to the schema, I have a controller or presenter responsible for the API layer, preparing data to be sent to the server and getting data from the server. I have a view, but I also have a view model because I need place to store this data. It's something like VMVPCM pattern. You won't find this in books, but that's what you see in the real projects. Let's talk about more complex patterns like clean architecture. The main idea I like from clean architecture is that internal layers shouldn't depend on external layers. At the most internal layer, we have entities, enterprise business rules. If we are creating a banking infrastructure or mobile game, we want to keep these business rules unchangeable for years or longer. Many clients can depend on them, web clients, mobile clients, etc. That's our business rules in the center, the most internal layer. Next, we have use cases, application business rules. Use cases goal is to get our business rules, which are usually very generic and make them less generic, more specialized for specific scenarios. Next, we have controllers that play the same role we discussed before. So the idea of a controller is to receive data and prepare it to the next level. An important difference from MV patterns is that database is no longer part of the model or entities. Earlier, we saw that the model which included business rules was at the center of the application, but clean architecture moves it to the level of external interfaces, closer to web clients. And this makes sense because if you think about it for a minute, the database is as easily replaceable as the view. Before we say that we could rewrite the entire application from view to React, and it would not affect our business rules or the logic of our application. We can go even further and add a new view, such as mobile client view. This will not affect our business logic as well. We can replace the view, but we can also easily replace the database. We can use Firebase, we can use MongoDB, or we can use Postgres or any other database. And the question is, will it affect our business rules? And the answer is no, it shouldn't affect our business rules at all. Imagine we're building a bank application. We have transactions rules. When one user send money to another user, we need to decrease the amount of money on one account and increase the amount of money on another account. We need to store these transactions somewhere and store the balance of each user as well. If we decide to replace Firebase with MongoDB or MongoDB with PostgreSQL, will it affect these rules? No, it won't affect it at all. That makes total sense. We don't even care where our data will be stored. It might be Redis or a relational database, or we can even store it on the hard drive. It might not even be a database. It might be like just a text document. We don't really care about it. That's why we want to move the database here on the external level, near the web client and mobile application. At this point, you might ask, how we can apply this to the real applications? Every backend application should be aware of the database. They need it because we need to write requests to the database. We need to include database-related logic in our app. So that's the reason why we have controllers. In the port and adapters pattern, it's called adapters, and I believe this name is more suitable than controllers, but controllers also fine. We used a controller before to prepare data for different layers. At the level of use case, we shouldn't know about the database or web client or mobile app. But at the level of controller, we should be aware of it because we take raw data from the use case, prepare it somehow for the web client database, mobile app, and send it to the next level. Clean architecture is mostly for backend development, but I made examples of how we can use it in frontend in my previous video about the architecture. On the frontend, you can apply the same rules. We don't have business rules, but we probably have some logic on the client side, and this logic should be in the center of our app. Clean architecture might be too overcomplicated for web applications, but I believe it's still a very valid and useful pattern you have to know if you develop a full-stack application. 
Here's an example of dependency rule, which I believe one of the most important things you can take from clean architecture, even for web applications written in React or Vue. Here we have view model and controller, but in a clean architecture, we will call it the external interface. And also it's like a client side controller. This controller will be part of the external interface as well. But in MVC, it will be separated layer. The rule of dependency in clean architecture says to us the inner layer shouldn't be dependent on external layer. We know that the controller is more internal layer than a view model and view. Here we have the employee type and we use it for our hook. But we also import this employee type in the controller to describe the API endpoint output. This is a problem because the inner layer controller depends on the external layer. We import these types from UI hook, which is not good. Here's how we can fix the situation. Same hook, but now we import the type from the controller. In our case, the controller is the source of truth. Every layer outside of the controller should be dependent on the controller. This is an example of how we can apply the dependency rule on the front end side. The previous patterns talk in big, wide layers. Now imagine you have 50 components, 30 hooks, and 20 stores. Patterns like MVC and MVP and others helps us to describe the high-level architecture in the app, but they don't tell us how the code should be organized internally. Let's see how it works in React. Instead of having just view, controller, model for entire app, we have features. Notice how everything related to employee functionality lives together. The hook handles API calls and data management. That's our controller or presenter. The use employee form hook handles view specific state, like whether a pop up is open. That's our view model. And the component just renders. That's our view. This approach gives you multiple benefits. First, when you're working on employee functionality, everything you need is one place. Second, if you need to remove or refactor the employee feature, you know exactly which files to touch. Third, different developers can work on different features without stepping on each other toes. You can still use MVC, MVP, MVVM, or any other pattern inside each slide. This gives you separation of responsibility both across the app and within features and it scales much better than organizing everything by technical layers. The key insight is that as your app grows, you need modularity at multiple levels, not just separating view from controller, but also separating different business domains from each other. Here's some final thoughts before I wrap up the video. Knowing patterns doesn't mean you need to strictly apply them. The good thing about patterns is that all developers have a common language. For example, during code review, you can say something like, this is the view logic, keep it isolated, please. Or move this to the controller, and other developers will understand you. Second, you should think about patterns in terms of boundaries and separations of concerns. That's the red line that runs through all the patterns. And third, each project is unique. My goal in the previous video was not to say that you should strictly use patterns as I showed. In a 40 minutes video, I can't cover all possible implementations because every project is unique. My goal was to give you the tools and mental models so that you can apply these patterns fully or partially, whatever fits your project, and adapt them to modern realities. That's all for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye.